Drew Dixon, Salai Abrams, and Alexia Norton-Jones say they're all survivors of sex crimes committed by media mogul Russell Simmons. This is pedatrol. This is violently tackled and It's saying no and fighting and crying. This was a very swift attack. I met this person when I was in high school. She said, you will never speak to me again. I'll never speak to you until you die. Russell Simmons has major issues. For decades, he's taken advantage of multiple women and has gotten away with it, despite his own children calling him out and claiming he's a monster, he's still walking free as his survivors are living in fear. So let's get into it. It seems like every music executive is a monster at this point, and today we need to talk about Russell Simmons. Before we had Jay-Z, Diddy, and Dre, we had Russell. He's a former New York street hustler turned promoter, artist manager, record producer, and label owner. The man is worth over $300 million and he has a lot of power. But to be honest, the first time I heard of Russell Simmons was whenever Kimora Lee Simmons had her reality TV show, and I grew up on that kind of television, probably tells you a lot, and that's how I knew who he was at first. As co-founder of Def Jam Recordings, Russell Simmons is considered a pillar of hip-hop culture, which he helped to define from its earliest days through music that's and right fashion. Nice We're going to dive into what happened between Russell and Kimura, but to give you guys some context, they were married from the years 1998 through 2009, and they have two daughters together. The public knew that Kimura and Russell weren't really happy together, and we'll get into the details, but I want to talk a little bit about his past behavior behavior because his daughters and his ex-wife have all spoken out against him and he's done some disturbing things that you just can't defend. Now let's talk about the three women who have come forward and accused Russell of doing inappropriate things to them. He had tried to put out a statement to save himself by saying that he has rededicated himself to spiritual learning. But at the same time, it doesn't seem like he learned much because he was also quoted saying, what I will not accept is responsibility for what I have not done, which I totally get it. But if you look at all these stories, plus his ex-wife speaking out, I think the whole world knows exactly what he did. The women we spoke with went into detail about what they allege were serious assaults. They are also speaking out after being silent for decades. I did not want to come forward. It was the last thing I wanted to do. Everyone said, don't do it. It's going to ruin your life. I felt like no matter what I said, nobody was going to hear us. I was helping him cover it up for 22 years. And I thought, well, let me see what it feels like to just let it go. Let me try. Drew Dixon, Salai Abrams, and Alexia Norton-Jones say they're all survivors of sex crimes committed by media mogul Russell Simmons. It is so powerful that these women are coming forward because what they share is disturbing and they are making it very clear that it's not like, you know, he did anything minuscule, like he violated them completely and they have been living in fear, speaking out against such a powerful person. The three of you aren't describing this just as sexual assault or just as being mistreated by Russell Simmons or sexually harassed by well, Russell no, Simmons. No, this is pedatrol. This is violently tackled and it's saying no and fighting and crying. They're making it very clear that he was violent, aggressive, like obviously there's no good kind of crime or incident like this, but these women make it like known that they were conscious. They felt him physically attack them. It's not like it's really up for debate. Let's take it back to 1995 because Drew Dixon was working her dream job as an executive at Def Jam Records, Russell's company. But as her star rose, Miss Dixon, then 24, was spiraling into depression. She said because of prolonged and aggressive harassment by her direct supervisor, Russell Simmons. On work calls, he would talk graphically about how she aroused him at staff meetings. He asked her to sit on his lap. Can you imagine sitting in a professional room and the boss has like, I mean, this is crazy. And I'm sure at this point he was also dating Kimura. Um, 
then I guess uh, he regularly exposed his privates, her, his wiener, to her. Um, later that year, Russell Simmons violated her. You know, the R word that we can't say on YouTube. And his downtown Manhattan apartment. She said she quit the job afterwards because she was so broken. Drew Dixon says she was working with Simmons when he allegedly attacked her in 1995. I literally worked for him. He was ordering me a car and he told me to come upstairs and pick up a demo. I thought I would be in his apartment for five total minutes. That's it. And he showed up naked wearing a car and tackled me to his bed while I screamed and fought and said no and cried. That's that is so extremely traumatizing. I feel like I would never trust a boss again. And Drew had another boss who took advantage of her. After leaving Russell Simmons, one music mogul, she went on to L.A. Reid. And she says she was harassed by him as well. If you guys want an L.A. Reid video, comment below. Now let's talk about Tony Sally, because in 1987, she was a music journalist and she met Russell Simmons while on an assignment. She found him to be charming and a playboy, and they ended up going on a few dates before she decided they weren't a match. The two remained civil, even though they didn't work out. And actually, in 1988, Russell invited her to his apartment for a party that he was hosting for his girlfriend. When Tony arrived, the place was empty except for Russell. What? Completely empty. Not even a party. He's just lying. Saying he wanted to show her the apartment, he led her to his bedroom, pushed her onto the bed, jumped on top of her, and physically attacked her. Why isn't this man in jail? She says she was fighting him, saying no. And that's not it, because about a year later at a music conference, she saw him again, and she said that they they met in the hotel lobby. Um, when he tried to lead her to a dark beach, she resisted, and he attacked her, grabbing her by the hair, and said he even chased her into the women's restroom before she escaped to her room, where she barricaded the door. What? She says, to this day, I still don't feel comfortable in a room of men. At some point, Tony did go to the Manhattan District Attorney's Office to accuse him of these crimes. But at this point, the statute of limitations has passed. So there's no way, I guess, that she can prosecute him for this. Now I want to talk to you guys about Alexia Norton Jones, because she actually knew who Russell Simmons was for a while. And on their first date, he had violated her. And it's really interesting to me, like looking at his survivors, how they are different characters in his life and people who he would see so like, you know, casually. And I can't imagine what goes through his mind where he sees someone he's known for years or who works for him and then just like immediately feels the impulse to do this. Like, is it calculated? He's been thinking about that for a while or is it like he sees red? There's definitely something mentally wrong with him. I met him in my early 20s. Alexia Norton Jones knew Russell Simmons before he was famous and says he her on their first and only date in 1991. This was a very swift attack. And what was going through my mind more than anything was why? Was just a why? Because I liked Russell and I, you know, I would have just kissed him. I would have made out with him. I would have I, I, he didn't have to attack me. There's no doubt in my mind that these women are telling the truth. I mean, really, what do they have to lie for? And it's not like they're seeking like monetary gain. They can't even really go and sue him. And maybe he doesn't even realize he did this. I mean, at some point, there's a tweet that he sent out in 2012 talking about taking lots of every drug from heroin to, to coke to ecstasy and LSD. Um, so he was a big party guy. Maybe he doesn't remember what he had did. Doesn't change that it's extremely wrong. Russell Simmons said all of his relationships have been consensual and in a statement to CBS this morning said, I have issued countless detailed denials of the false accusations against me. These denials have been validated by my passing nine prosecution-grade lie detector tests.
He also referenced changing social norms, saying, I have admitted to being a massively unconscious playboy, which today is appropriately titled womanizer. The social change from today's activism is more important to the world my daughters will inherit than any dirt from false accusations from nearly 40 years ago. Hearing Russell's statement, it does seem like he likes this new wave of protection over women and power to women, probably because he has daughters. But before that, he was a womanizer. He admitted it. Why wouldn't he have done these things if he felt so comfortable doing that and all those drugs? But I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about his daughters because Kimora Lee Simmons accuses Russell Simmons of verbal up against their daughters. Like most celebrities do, she took to social media to call out her ex-husband. Just one day after Father's Day, Russell appears to be at the center of a massive family feud. The day after, he shared a story which read, stop telling fathers they should have fought harder to see their children and start asking mothers why he had to fight at all trying to, I guess, insinuate that Kimora didn't allow him to see their girls. She decided to respond and wrote, I'm so sorry to have to do this, but this man has been threatening my kids' lives. I'm hearing so much more now. We won't be bullied, threatened, or afraid. Wait, threatening my kids' lives? I mean, that's insane. And at this point, the children are 23 and 20. They are grown women. Like, why would you even say something like that to your kid? weirdo. She also wrote, leave my kids alone. This narrative of attacking the only caregiver, the only parent in the house with the kids, the mom and the kids for one's own shortcomings and embarrassments is dead, dead, dead. Kimora also accused him of being a to women in his life. She said, this is how you, Russell, maneuver with all the women around you. Your threats and lies and intimidation maneuvers and tactics are sad. Stop it, please. Your own flesh and blood, enough is enough. So saying, not only do you talk to our daughters like this, but you talk to all women like this. Russell Simmons is a deadbeat dad. In recent years, um, Kimora posted a story stating that Russell didn't attend his children's college graduations, stop financially supporting them, and stop communicating with them. Clearly, he has issues where he's trying to punish people in his life for his own behavior, and it's sick that his daughters have to suffer, and it really does seem like they have suffered because of him. Wait until they have their documentary one day, because their daughter, Aoki, I hope I'm saying it correctly, who graduated from Harvard, very smart, posted a video on her Instagram page, and it seems like you can hear Russell yelling over, I guess, FaceTime. She wrote, this is not someone who will accept help. This is just one screen. Screen recording. Sorry, I don't always remember to press record when he calls my friends, my boyfriend, anyone to get a chance to threaten and curse and go crazy. Okay, y'all, it's really a lot going on. He's doing a lot of yelling, but we were able to make out the end of this video. He says, I'm broke. She stole everything. And that's really all we got right now. She also shared screenshots of text messages between her and her father to her Instagram story where he would harass her boyfriend and her friends if she blocked him. It seems like she's begging him to please leave her alone and just stop texting her friends. Like, I mean, that's way overstepping. She is not done. She has put her dad on blast, basically exposed him as an aggressive narcissist who doesn't care about anything, lies and uses his own children for anything. Y'all, she just posted these text messages. She posted these messages where she wrote to her father, Dad, I stopped talking to you because you were giving me panic attacks to the point where I was placed on medication every time we spoke. I cannot have a relationship with you until that stops. Mm. Every time I spoke to you, you would yell and scream about the legal situation that I can't respond to because I'm not involved. I'm your child, not your lawyer, your ex-wife, or any of it. So it seems like maybe they're, I don't know how long they're like, legal battle has been going on, but dang, yeah, he's definitely involving the kids and he probably wants to go off on Kimura, but he's just going to take it out on his own daughters and he will regret that. Their fighting is really toxic. I'm like sitting here reading this like, uh, he's, you know, a you know, going off about Kimora, saying that she has stolen my money, the love of my kids that she promised. And <laughs> I mean, Aoki says, I'll never speak to you until you die. Don't ever say that again. Um, so she, yeah, she said she did not steal it. You lost it. Well, I mean, also keep in mind, like, isn't he worth like $300 million? Like, can she not get like a decent, like, you know, pay cut after the divorce and dealing with him for so long. It honestly makes me so uncomfortable reading these, but I guess like she felt like she needed to share these to ultimately defend her mother and kind of expose her father. I mean, she talks about the 
anger and rage that he would have on the phone, cursing and screaming, all because of this divorce and this money, stuff that she just doesn't have control over. And honest, I mean, I like Mora publicly. I don't know how she is privately, but I really don't think she's the type where she could go and like brainwash these kids. Like she, she can't convince them that she's some angel. I just kind of think there's a lot of victims when it comes to Russell Simmons. She said you put us all in. Just why? I'm out here praying for you and hoping everything goes well. And you call my mother a piece of ish? He said to her, neutral my A. I didn't even appear in your media and your mother has stolen my money and the love of my kids and she promised she, I'll, I'll, your promise gonna see what she actually is, right? Then, by the way, she literally said that she has had enough. She said, you will never speak to me again. I'll never speak to you until you die. Don't ever say that again. She did not steal. You lost it. Russell said she's a piece of ish, a piece of ish. She said, understand, you lost it with your action. Because there's this huge feud, there's been a shift in dynamic because these victims who have come forward have, you know, damning stories. His own family has had traumatic experiences and Kimura actually went live and shared that she had been like with him when she was a minor, very illegal. And she's had to put up with so much. She's seen so much and it's such a vulnerable Instagram live. I don't know if it's the best like decision illegally if they are in a legal battle, but it's so powerful for her to share her story. And um, I mean, if it's all true, then, you know, facts ain't defamation. Hey, I met this person when I was in high school in St. Louis, Missouri, I was modeling 16 years old. Like I've known you and everybody knows again, that's documented. You can see maybe a sophomore. I know it was before junior prom and senior prom. Cause I went to both of those proms alone with my friends when I was dating them. So it was definitely long before junior and senior prom. I think it was around sophomore year of high school. And again, everybody knows this in my life. You know, they know they I was walking around, they see me. The point of it is I've known you a long time and I've seen lots of stuff and I just choose to not go there. Lots of things that I could say over the time. You know, I'm typically the one that he and others would call to have their back, to validate everything. I'm also the one that always runs to the defense of all my friends. So if you see uh, any other women, certainly women that I've come up with, certainly women that are, are mothers of my children, other of my kids that I love, I come to their defense. Kimora seems like such a good person. Like she just truly wanted to do the best for her husband, someone that she loved. Maybe he had completely manipulated her. Like, I don't think she's giving me like Ghislaine Maxwell. Like, I think she's someone who was genuinely in love with him. Even some of those survivors earlier talked about how they actually really did like him. He was a charming guy, but he was also a monster at the same time. And there's something mentally wrong there. I mean, even his daughters are saying so. Aoki posted online that she believes that he's mentally ill or experiencing something like dementia he really acts like he hates and does not know his children hmm. i mean that must be really really like hard for her to accept that her father just like is such an aggressive and angry man and maybe he does have dementia like early onset i don't know exactly how he lost 300 million dollars so if he does have dementia like maybe there's something more there everyone is so brave for speaking out against russell but there have been a total of 13 women who have come forward russell did post a public apology to all of the instagram hate from his family and he wasn't really giving much he wrote deeply sorry for being frustrated and yelling in response to that yelling video we saw earlier but know this there are no conditions for for sure, I love you guys more than I love myself. Maybe it could be true because it doesn't seem like he is really happy with himself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have glasses on because I think I have like pink eye in both eyes. Ew, so ugly. But um, if you have any other video ideas for me, here is my email. Let's go ahead and open this PL box package item. It looks like it's from like something really nice, like lavender luxury. Okay, I'm so excited. I finally got my PO box package items. Thank you, mom. So we're gonna be opening items, you know, again. I had like a little bit of a break there. Okay, the packaging looks really nice and wait, what is this? Oh my gosh, is this like a lavender pillow or something? <gasps> I cannot. Thank you for your support. It looks like it's underscore lavender luxury on Instagram. And, oh my gosh, let's go ahead and see what they wrote. Sloan, I just wanted to reach out and say thank you for your continued efforts to bring awareness to the community. We are a family-owned company who is committed to giving back to our community through 
our sales, we donate pillows to those in need. That is so kind of you guys. I love that. We are sending you our memory foam and fiber filled pillow. We hope you love it. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Thank you, um, Anna. And I am going to list everything below. What a pretty letter too. Like beautiful handwriting, beautiful letter. We've got lavender vibes up in here. What are these little things? I'm so excited. Oh. Uh, just like bags of lavender. You have no idea. I spray my bed with lavender uh, essential oil every single night, like, and throughout the day. I'm just like constantly spraying my bed. I love lavender. So right here we have a nice pillowcase. Wow. Let's go ahead and open up the pillow. I think it takes like, you know, a couple hours, right? For this stuff to like fully form. Oh, I'm so excited. I love sleeping. I really do. And this feels so nice. So like, I think, you know, you give it a 24 hours and it expands, but wow, thank you so much. It already feels like really good. If you guys want to go and check them out, I will list them below, but thank you so much. And I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye guys.